Hello and welcome. My name is Julie Saruba Fountain and I'm the wellness coordinator at the College of St. Scholastica. I would like to welcome you to our webinar series, Stewardship in Seconds. Today's topic is living a sustainable lifestyle under the dimension of wellness entitled Practice Sustainability. We're going to be talking about a variety of topics related to sustainability today. For additional resources, you can go to the Centers for Disease Control under the heading Sustainability and Lifestyle. First of all, why are we focusing on sustainability? Part of wellness is the concept that you are connected to others and others are connected to you. We are a part of an ecosystem that we should protect in order to sustain our ability to thrive and live healthy lifestyles. We are all encouraged to take our part to take care of the environment. This environment helps you to protect yourself and others from the effects of serious health issues, such as asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, also known as COPD, and stroke that can be aggravated by an unhealthy environment. So what can we do? We can start by incorporating sustainability into our lifestyle. This involves becoming aware of the impact your choices in food, products, and energy use has on the environment. We can start small by focusing on small steps that we can take in our home environments, in our work environments, and in our community. For instance, you can start by calculating your environmental footprint or listening to the Center for Disease Control's Supporting a Healthy Planet podcast. These resources will be available on the WellU website. First up, we're going to review how to make sustainable food choices. Food impacts almost every component of our lives. The production, processing, packaging, and transportation of the majority of our food are highly dependent on fossil fuels and chemical fertilizers. These can greatly harm our health and the health of our environment. In response, a move towards sustainable food has become an important component of public health and environmental health. We have envisioned a food system that provides healthy, sustainable choices, minimizes environmental impacts, and serves as a model for the broader public health community. It's up to you as a purchaser and consumer to consider the impact of food from seed to table. You can do this by choosing local, healthy, and environmentally responsible food that helps promote personal health as well as the overall health of our community. Plant good food thoughts and grow good food choices. Sustainability food systems operate in a cycle of sustainable production and support. So farmers can make their food more sustainable by limiting pesticide use and treating their animals humanely and responsibly. Consumers can cast their votes for these healthier and sustainable foods when they choose to support these farms. Choosing foods that are produced close to home also reduces the impact of our food system on the environment by reducing the distance food travels from farm to table. Next up is making good transportation choices. Sustainable transportation reduces the impact of vehicle emissions and includes active and shared transportation options. For instance, the Duluth Transit Authority provides regular transportation throughout Duluth, Minnesota, Superior, Wisconsin, and Proctor, Minnesota. And if you are a CSS employee or student, it is free. You can also try busing and biking or busing and walking. For instance, you can walk a few blocks to the nearest bus stop and then hop on the bus and bus the rest of the way to your destination. Or you can bike a few blocks to the nearest bus stop and then bus your way to the nearest transportation site. Some examples of shared transportation include van pooling, car pooling, and public transportation. Active transportation includes activities like walking or bicycling. Including these activities not only helps the environment, but also will help you reach your physical activity guidelines, the recommended levels of those physical activity guidelines. You can also practice sustainability by living a healthy lifestyle. 
On your screen, you'll see some ways to live a healthy and sustainable lifestyle. For instance, incorporating physical activity into your daily life and eating healthy and nutritious food, reducing your stress, staying connected to family and friends. For more information about these various topics, the WellU webpage has additional webinars on all of them. Overall, the health of a population and the environment are undoubtedly related. By taking actions to sustain the health of the environment, you have a positive impact on the health and wellness of those who live, work, and play in it. A practical step that you can do to improve the environment would be to conserve energy and water. Electronics have a large impact on the environment and on human health. The fabrication and shipments of electronics involve the use of water and energy and often result in the creation of industrial waste. Once electronic devices are in use, they can require large amount of energy to operate, nearly half of which is generated through burning coal. This type of energy generation produces air pollution and contributes to greenhouse gas emissions, both of which are harmful to the human health. Finally, the disposal of electronics results in a massive amount of waste going into landfills where toxins are commonly found in electronics, such as mercury, lead, beryllium, and cadmium. These toxic toxins that are found in electronics can leak into the soil or be released into the air through burning. Only through management over the entire electronics life cycle can we mitigate the negative effects on our soil, water, and air, and health. Some practical steps would be to turn off your computer. Save energy by turning off your computer each night when you leave the office and turning off computers at home when not in use. Or you can turn off your lights. When you leave your office or are the last one to leave the room, turn off the lights to save energy. Thirdly, you can repair or report drips. Save water by repairing drips or leaks as soon as possible or report them to facilities to have the problem remedied. Lastly, you can calculate your personal emissions on the EPA emissions cal calculator, which is found on the WellU resources page. Some other practical tips for conserving the future include reducing, reusing, and recycling. In order to minimize the harmful effects of electronic production and disposal, their manufacturers, users, and owners must practice good stewardship. This requires a holistic approach that is concerned with the entire lifestyle of electronics, from design to disposal. You as a user can do several things to ensure that you are being a responsible steward of your electronic resources. For instance, you can reduce. So maintain and keep equipment as long as possible. Reduce energy by unplugging or turning off equipment when not in use. And purchase equipment only when it's necessary. You can reuse, which means borrow or share equipment. And keep unneeded newer equipment in use through refurbishment and reuse programs. Also, recycle. Instead of purchasing new, look for that refurbished equipment, accessories, or toner cartridges. And dispose of equipment safely. There are a variety of resources available in Duluth, such as Neighbors Helping Neighbors, Restore, and recycling programs through the county and the city that you can connect with in order to conserve. Another part of conservation is purchasing environmentally responsible products and services. You as a consumer have the opportunity to minimize the impact on the environment by making choices carefully. This includes buying products with recycled or bio-based content and that are manufactured with alternative energy methods that preserve natural resources. For work and home, we purchase goods such as electronics, paper, lab equipment, and vehicles. Each of these products is part of a life cycle that includes material removal, manufacturing, use, and disposal. Each step in this process requires energy and natural resources and releases emissions and other pollutants that may be potentially harmful to the human health. Limit your purchases to only necessary products when possible. When you do need to buy, consider products that are recyclable, biogradable, and energy and EPAET 
compliant. Consider products that have a longer life cycle and products that can be reused. Avoiding single-use products such as disposable dishware and utensils, for example, are a good way to be environmentally responsible. Now on to some green purchasing guidelines. When you do have to purchase products, you can consider the characteristics shown on the screen. For instance, you can buy recycled content, bio-based content. You can look for energy efficient and water efficient products. Also, minimal life cycle costs in manufacturing and long product life. And consider the question, is this product really necessary? Do I really need to buy this product? Lastly, one of the final steps that you can do to practice a sustainable lifestyle is charter a green and healthy work group. You can work with the leadership at CSS to form a team that will tackle making green and healthy changes in your group. So a quick overview of sustainability basics. Sustainability is based on a simple principle. Everything that we need for our survival and well-being depends either directly or indirectly on our natural environment. Sustainability creates and maintains the conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony that permit fulfilling the social, economic, and other requirements of the present and future generations. Sustainability is important to making sure that we have the continued resources of water material to protect our human health and our environment. Three steps to sustainability. Three things that you can do right now would be to educate yourself on the environment, food safety, and ethics. Ask questions. It's your right as a consumer to know about the products you're purchasing and how they're manufactured. And also take action. You can buy local, buy direct, grow your own, learn more, and get involved. If you have any questions, please visit the WellU website or email me directly and my email address is displayed on the screen. Lastly, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. What can you do today to take care of your body and your environment? So thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, like I said, you can email me or go to the WellU website. As mentioned previously, this webinar is part of the Well You Stewardship in Seconds webinar series. Be sure to check out the other topic areas, including finding balance, eating well, getting fit, managing money, seeking spirituality, and living healthy. Now back to that question, what can you do today to take care of your body and the environment? For instance, could you shop at a local farmer's market? Could you make sure that you will unplug your computer at the end of the day? or turn off the lights when you leave the room. Try it today and try it tomorrow and see if you can make a difference. Thanks again and be well.